Okay. So what they're saying in this statement is NPQR, which is uh, this little quadrilateral, is similar to another quadrilateral, which we had UVST. So similarity, notice how that's not congruency. Remember, congruency looked like that, right? But we're just having similarity. So what that means is they're the same shape, but they're not necessarily the same size. So what they're asking us to do, or what I want to show you how to do, is how to write, uh, when we have similarity, one thing we want to do is write proportions of sides that are going to be similar to each other, as well as write angles that are going to be congruent. right? Because remember when we looked at those two triangles that, right, that I helped you with? Right? We knew those, the shapes were not the same size, right? But were the angles exactly the same? Yes. So when you have the angles are still going to be exactly the same, meaning they're going to be congruent. But just because the angles are congruent does not mean that the shapes are going to be congruent. So the first thing that I would want to do, guys, is write down my congruency statements for my angles. All right? Now, you guys can look at the figure. But also, if you're provided a statement, you can also just look at it. Remember, because when we write statements, we have to write them in congruent order of their angles. So therefore, n has, is congruent to u. And look at n and u. Do those look like they're the same? Yes. So I can say angle n is congruent to angle u. Then let's go to p. Are p and v look like they're the same? Yes. So angle p is congruent to angle v. Right? So it's very important when you, if you have to write a, con a similarity statement, or if you're provided a similarity statement, that already tells you what angles are congruent to each other, right? You can just follow along in the pattern. Angle Q is congruent to angle S. And angle R is congruent to angle T. So does everybody see that? Cool? Cool. All right. So now. Um, so now we're looking at that. And um, so now what we like to do is write a proportion for similarity. So remember, Caleb, when we're, doing, when we were talking about proportions last class period, we said it's a comparison, right? One side is compared to the other, right? So what we're going to be doing is we're going to use fractions to compare them. But Caleb, PQ, what would you say PQ compares to? Which one of those sides in that other uh, quadrilateral does PQ compare to? <laughs> to TU? Huh? Well, here, let me give you a hint, helpful hint. P to Q is right here. Over which side would it compare to over there? Oh, yeah. VS, right? It's OK. But that's a very important thing, Robert, because a lot of times when you guys are doing these problems, you might get confused on looking at the figures. right? The figures might try to mess you up. So one thing you guys can always do is go back to your similarity statement. And what you can look at this is say, oh, NP is going to be a ratio with UV. PQ is a ratio with VS. And QR is a ratio of ST. And then NR is a ratio with UT. All right, so what we're going to do is I can now say with my ratios that NP, NP, this, this is the longest side, right? Is that the longest side? What's the longest side over here? UV. So I could say NP is compared to UV. Does everybody see that? They're both the longest sides. So NP is compared to UV. PQ, PQ is the only one that's slanted, right? PQ is the same thing as VS. Yes? OK. Then we can go up to uh, QR. QR looks like that's about one of the shorter lengths. QR should go to uh, ST. And then the last one, I could do Rn. And Rn can go to Tu. Okay. So what I'd like you to be able to do 
is go ahead and write your, not only your congruency for your angles from your similarity statement, but then also write the proportions because that's going to be very important for how we're going to be solving these. Okay? Write the proportions. How does one side from one figure relate to another side from the other figure? Okay?